So first question just asks you to write a definition in your own words for each of the terms below. Um, it gives you a page number for reference, which then you'll find the book definition for. Um, so be sure you think about writing it in your own words so it's something that will make sense um, to you. So don't feel like you have to have the very formal definition. Um, but so what is a rigid transformation? So it's just reflections, rotations, um, let me make this a little bit smaller. So reflections, rotations, translations um, are the examples of them or the types of them. And one other thing that's really important about rigid transformations is that they keep um, this, the shape the same size. So keep the original and image the same size. So something like that. Um, all right, then reflections. So reflections has a, like I said, a big formal definition, but something that you'll remember. So I like to think of reflections as flip flips. Okay, so it's going to flip something over a line. So it's going to flip a shape over a line. The line is important. There has to be a line that it's going over. Um, and then another thing is that when you connect the image to, or the original to the image, so if I just call the original A and then the image A prime, that's going to be perpendicular um, to the line of reflection. Translations. So translations are like slides. So it's going to slide um, a shape along a directed line. So there's going to be a directed line segment, okay, looking something like this. It's got, you know, a starting point and it's got an arrow on it and you're going to move a shape. Um, so you're going to slide a shape in a specific length um, and direction. And when you connect the original to the image, um, that's going to be parallel to um, the directed segment. So reflections, um, the original and the image are going to be perpendicular uh, for a translation. The image to the original to image is going to be parallel. Then rotations. So rotations are like turns. Okay, so it's going to turn a figure um, around a given point. And let's just call that point P. So when you connect the original to the point that we're rotating around to the image, um, that angle, okay, so the measure of that angle is going to equal the angle of rotation. Vertical angles are um, the angles that are formed when two lines intersect. They are across from each other. And then supplementary angles are two angles that add together to equal 180 degrees. All right, then number two says that we've got two polygons, P and Q. So P is this blue polygon. We see that P right there. And then Q is the green one. Um, select all sequences of translations, rotations, and reflections below that would take polygon P to polygon Q. So if you had tracing paper, um, this would be a good one to trace this blue shape onto, and then you can kind of perform each of these um, maneuvers here. Um, but let's take a look at each one. So A says rotate um, P, so rotate this blue shape 180 degrees around A. So when we do a rotation, remember that a rotation keeps the center of rotation in the same spot. So in this case, um, point A is going to stay in the same spot, 
and we're just going to be rotating this blue shape around there. Well, if we look at this, um, this angle A and this angle are not the same. They're not corresponding angles in these shapes. So this isn't going to work to just rotate this 180 degrees around because it's not going to drop this on its corresponding angle. So A is going to not work. Next one says translate so that um, point A is taken to J. So let me just draw out this um, shape here. So let me go over this. And then we're just going to um, translate this down. So let me group it together here. So this says to just take A to point J. So here's A. We'll just move it to J. And then it says to reflect over the line BA. So then it wants us to reflect over this line BA. So if we reflect over this line, if you fold it over, it will land, this new black shape will land exactly onto that green shape. So this is good. Part C says, um, let's rotate 60 degrees counterclockwise around A. So A is going to stay in the same spot. Counterclockwise, remember, is this way. So we're going to rotate it to the left. Um, and 60 degrees is one of these triangle angles. So remember that A needs to stay in the same spot. Okay, so mine's going to move on the screen as I'm doing this. So I'll just keep moving it back. But we need to rotate it 60 degrees. Okay, so I needed to rotate, essentially rotate this segment. Let me get a different color. Essentially, I needed to rotate this segment down 60 degrees like this. Okay, so that's how I knew when to stop. So I rotated 60 degrees. And then it says now it wants us to reflect um, over line FA. So here is line FA. So if we flip this over, um, we'll see that this angle would land here. And those two angles are not corresponding. So that is not going to be a transformation that will work. So part C is not going to work. And I'll just put this back. All right, D says reflect over line BA. So we're going to have to reflect over line BA first. So here's BA. All right, so then this is going to reflect to here. And then it says rotate 60 degrees counterclockwise again around point A. So point A will stay the same and we're gonna rotate this um, 60 degrees here. And remember we gotta keep A in the same spot. And once you rotate it 60 degrees, It'll land here, which does not land on top of that green one. So then part D will not be good. And then final one here um, has us reflect over line um, BA first. So let me actually put this back on here. And so we reflected over BA first, which had given us this one. So there's the reflection over BA. Then it says translate by directed segment from B to A. So we want to go along this segment. So we're just going to translate um, the shape from B. So from B to A. And we see that it lands on that green one. So this would be good. All right, the number three for each figure, draw in any lines of reflection symmetry. So let's draw these in, um, in one color here, and I'm going to do dotted. So let's do these in orange. So we're going to do reflection symmetry in orange. And then it also asks if you can rotate at 180 degrees. So reflection symmetry would fold over on itself. So we could definitely fold this shape here. 
we could fold it here and actually also on these diagonals here you'd be able to fold it on itself so there's all of the reflection symmetries and then this one if you rotated it certainly would um, land on itself after a 180 degree rotation middle one this kind of rectangle we would be able to do reflection symmetry directly through the middle horizontally um, and also directly through the middle vertically wouldn't be able to do it along these diagonals since it's longer um, than it is tall but we could um, certainly rotate it 180 degrees around the center and it would land on itself this star um, should be able to do a reflection symmetry this way since all of this is the same here so that's going to work through all of these peaks you'd have reflection symmetry and then actually right in between them you would have it as well so right in between each one so this one has quite a few reflection symmetries and then it's also going to be able to rotate on itself 180 degrees all right, number four says that we've got quadrilateral A, B, C, D is congruent to A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Describe a sequence of rigid motions that will take um, each point to its image. So um, I've got this orange one on here so that I can move it as we write out some transformations. So first thing that you'll want to do is get these two figures touching each other. So we're going to slide it over or do a translation. So we're going to translate and then it doesn't matter here, but you want to take one of the points to its image. So you could do A to A prime, B to B prime, C to C prime. I generally like to just stay alphabetical, um, but that's going to move us off the grid here. So I'm going to actually translate um, by directed segment B, B prime. And so then that just means that we're going to take and move this shape so that B lands on B prime. Okay, so I did that. Now um, we can see that, whoops, we want to move. Um, so right now I have C right here. So I want to get C on top of C prime. So now we're going to want to rotate um, A, B, C, D until c cohen or sorry around okay so let's do rotate a b c d around point b prime okay so this point right here until c this point on the orange uh, coincides with c prime which just means until that point lands on c prime so remember that b will stay so this will stay here um so this one will stay and we'll keep rotating until C lands on C prime and that actually finishes off um, the rest of it. So it gets it to land exactly. All right, number five asks us to use a compass and a straight edge to construct the reflection of point A across the line. So remember that we when we connect an image or an original to its image, it's gonna be on a perpendicular line. So we're gonna to wanna to find and construct that perpendicular line first. So let's um, do that. Let me make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna do dotted lines. Let me do it in gray. So you're gonna to want to make sure that you um, start by drawing a circle around A. Then you're gonna to wanna to go to the intersection points of that circle with the line and open to that intersection width. Then you're going to draw two new circles here, okay, one around this intersection point and then one around this intersection point. This will give you the, the perpendicular line, okay? So now we'll have the perpendicular line um, that goes through A. So if I connect here to here, this is the line that we know the reflection point will be on. So we know the reflection point is going to be on there. The other thing we know about reflections is that the reflection is the same distance away from the line as the original. So this is how far A is on this side of the line. So A prime is going to be that far on the other side. So A prime is going to be right there. 
So let's draw that on there. Let me get a little bit of a thicker line there. So then there is where A prime will be. All right, number six says, what is the image of segment FG after a 90 degree clockwise rotation around point P? So point P is going to stay set. And then we're going to rotate this around point P. So let me see if I group these together, if I'm going to be able to kind of rotate. So we want to rotate 90 degrees, leaving P in the same spot. Okay, so a 90 degree rotation will set us at segment AB. Then the next one says, what is the image of segment AB after we do a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation? Okay, so counterclockwise rotation around B. So B is going to stay set. A is just going to rotate around, okay, 90 degrees. So that's going to land on segment BC. Number seven in the figure shown, lines F and G are parallel. Okay, so these two lines are parallel. Select all statements that must be true. So angle three is congruent to angle six, and that's going to be true because if we think about doing a rotation here, um, three will land exactly on six. Those are called alternate interior angles. So that is gonna be true. The measure of angle two is gonna equal the measure of angle six. That is gonna be true because you've got a translation here. So if we translated this down, two would land exactly on six. Those are called corresponding angles. Um, ang whoops. Angle two and angle five are supplementary. So if, I guess I could have left that. So if we think about angle two, translating down. So two and six are the same. And we know that five and six together make a straight line. So if angle two and six are the same, then angle five plus two will also be 180. Letter D, angle one is congruent to angle seven. So here is angle one. So if we think about translating that down, angle one is gonna land on angle five and angle five and seven together create a straight line. So they are not going to be equal to each other. Okay, angle one and angle seven are actually supplementary. Angle four equals angle six. So the measure of angle four equals angle six. So if we think about translating this down again, Okay, four is gonna land on eight, not on six. So these are gonna be supplementary, not equal to each other. Angle seven and angle eight equal 180 degrees. That is true um, because together they make this straight angle. So they definitely add up to 180. Number eight says, use the given figure of a triangle. Suppose that the A equals 22 degrees and the B equals 63 degrees. Let's find the value of these others. So if we're looking for C, remember triangle sum theorem says that all three of these interior angles are gonna total 180. So if we um, add the 22 and the 83 to, or the 63 together, we'll get 85. So then let's subtract that from 180 and we would get 95 degrees left over for angle C. And then it wants us to find the value of D. So exterior angle theorem actually tells us that this angle is equal to the sum of these two angles. So 85. Another way you could do that is by seeing that this is a straight line so these two together equal 180 as well. So if we did 180 minus angle C, which is 95, that would get us back to 85 as well. And then we did A plus B 
already, and that was 85. 